we are going to be talking about the intrepid Venetian merchants. In particular, we're going to be talking about Andrea Barbarigo's no good, very stressful year of 1430. Andrea Barbarigo is one of the sort of hard luck stories of Venice, more or less. He is the sort of up-and-coming young merchantman who finally has a, for him, considerable sum that he's going to invest in ships, because this was how many Venetians made their money. You know, a load of pepper um, to be purchased at some point along one of the great convoys, brought back to Venice, and then resold inside of Venice. So, 1430 is the year he finally has enough scraped up to do so, and he invests in the uh, galleys of Flanders, which is one of Venice's longest trade routes. You come right down the Adriatic, like every trade route, and then go across the entire Mediterranean, uh, through the Straits of Gibraltar, into the North Atlantic, um, then go up uh, through the Channel at England, stop by Suffolk maybe, and then do the whole thing over again. Takes about half a year. And accordingly, because you have to pass by both Genoa, who the Venetians don't like, and Spain, who have the reputation of maybe a little bit pirating things, the galleys of Flanders tended to be rather heavily armed. Uh, the particular galley uh, squadron that was present in the year 1430 had about a thousand men armed in it. And Andrea Bar Barbarigo is in the position of many of us when we go bowling, right? We throw the ball, and then, as it's about halfway down the lane, we start realizing, oh no, oh no, something, something's going to go wrong. Move to the left, damn you! No, stop, right there, no, 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 no. We coach the ball when it's en route, even though we can't do much. Except for, instead of a bowling ball, consider the vicissitudes of geopolitics, right? If the fleet that you've invested in, you know, your life savings, your whole worth, uh, is en route when, say, uh, I don't know, Milan declares war on Venice, and Milan is allied with Genoa and maybe Sicily, that means that your ship, which had once been in very safe waters, is now in the middle of a war zone and you could lose all of your investment, not to mention the horrible things done to the crew. So it's a very stressful thing for Andrea Barbar Barbarigo to sit there and sort of wait for news and just kind of hope a war doesn't happen this year. Well, the galleys to Flanders don't start out well. Um, one of his loads of pepper gets by pirates or sunk in a storm, but the other one gets through the Straits of Gibraltar up to England, gets its load, and is coming back with the full armada Coming back through the Straits of Gibraltar, you you hear anachristic sirens. It's the Castilians. Aw, oh, shit. The Castilians have a very bloody reputation in this time period. And there are a lot of them. There is a fleet enough to challenge the very heavily armed galleys of Flanders. And so, you know, pull this armada over say the Castilians, and the Venetians think, well, we could fight, but if we don't have to, maybe we shouldn't. The Admiral of the Galley of Flanders, who has paid very well for this sort of negotiation, meets with the Castilian commander and says, listen, really, do, do we have to do this? And the Castilian commander says, depends, are you trading with the enemies of Castile? And this is a rhetorical question. The Castilian commander knows that the Galley of Flanders puts in for supplies in Sicily, which is an enemy of Castile. And the Venetian commander says, well, I mean, we do business with whoever, but more importantly, we'd like to do business with you. And they hand over a giant chest of very bright jewels to the Castilian, 
who is immediately smitten, sees the error of his ways and like, well, I guess we'll let your giant treasure fleet off with just a warning this time. And I'll take my big box of jewels and let you go. Venetians, don't need to tell me twice. I think we can call that a bribe. The fleet goes on its way. And as they write to their sponsors, but more specifically to Andrea Barbigio, who records this in his diary, uh, the, the admiral says, We were very lucky to get away, and we were even luckier that the chest of jewels we gave the Castilian commander was mostly glass replicas. I mean, there are a few actual jewels inside, but really, we got off quite cheaply. The fleet goes through the Mediterranean, avoids a declaration of war. Uh, Genoa decides to fight Venice for the umpteenth time. They avoid their traditional watering grounds and make it home. This cements Andrea Barbarigo's fortune, because he finally has his goddamn pepper. But this is an example of uh, the sort of everyday stressors or the wacky antics that Venetian merchants would get up to pretty much on the regular. 